Hey guys, Chris Grant here with ClearTheShelf.com and we're going to go over Tactical Arbitrage, the product search feature. Uh, product search is the first option up here in the menu bar and we'll go through each one of these and then I'll show you the scan that I just ran. So when you click on this drop down box you can see all of the sites that are available and to the right you'll see which ones are title search and which ones are UPC search. So for today I'm going to do a walmart.com search uh, and you can actually type in this box and you'll see that it pulls up what you're looking for. Now there are two Walmarts in here. One if you have keys uh, which I can show you how to get in another video uh, and then there's just the regular uh, walmart.com which is what most everyone will use you'll see that walmart.com is a UPC search. If you need any extra information, you can click or you can hover over these little question marks that are in the blue bubbles and you'll be able to see something about each one of these different areas. Uh, now, once you have selected a website, you'll always notice that there's a little bit of information over here. Uh, it'll give you a category example. Uh, for example, we're going to do a baby diapers today. Uh, and you'll see that you're going to want to use the entire URL for the category. You'll also see up here that there's a little arrow. This will actually open the website for you, in this case walmart.com. That way you can go in and look for categories. Your, we'll go over bulk search uh, in just a moment. Uh, the wholesale list, I don't have a wholesale list to show you, but it's very much like the bulk list. Uh, and I can make a video on that once I get a wholesale list to show everybody. The start page is where your search will start. And with Walmart.com, you will see that you get uh, 25, uh, you'll only get 25 pages in a search without the keys. And so you'll want to start from page one. There are 40 products per page, and if uh, a particular website starts on page zero, that will be noted over here in the notes. So we'll go from page one to page five. Now, if you have already used this and you have filters that you've placed in here before, you can click the last filter settings, and it will go ahead and pre-fill those for you. Uh, but each of these I'll go through them really quickly. The store price adjustment number one, if you know there is a store-wide discount, say for example Walmart has a 10% off coupon your whole purchase, you can put that in there to change your prices a little bit. Store price adjustment number two would be for things like gift cards and cash back sites. We know right now that you can get anywhere between 2 and 3% off gift cards for Walmart.com and then you can pull another two to four percent on cash back sites depending on which one you use. If you have state sales tax you can place that in here so it will automatically figure into your calculations. In Ohio it's somewhere between seven and a half and eight percent depending on what county you're in. If you're fortunate enough to be in a zero percent tax state like New Hampshire or uh, Oregon places like that uh, then you can leave that blank. If you want to remove ranks over a certain amount, you can place that here. Let's say you don't want to go any higher than 100,000. You can do that. If you want to limit the competition on a particular product, you can remove products with more than X number of sellers. Maybe you don't want to have anything with more than 30 or 40 or 50 sellers. You just place that number there. And anything with sellers more than that, it will go ahead and remove it. If you never want to see oversized products because you don't particularly care about sourcing them, then you can go ahead and put that, uh, click that little box, and it will remove anything that's oversized. If you want to remove out of stock products, you can do that for certain websites. Those websites are always changing depending on the uh, abilities of the website, but as of right now, Walmart, Target, Kmart, and several others are available for that option. I'll go ahead and click that because we don't want to have any out-of-stock products for Walmart.com. 
If Amazon doesn't have any weight or size data, you can choose that option and it will remove any of those listings for you. That way, if you're not sure how big it is, you just won't see it. If Amazon is also a seller and currently in stock, you can remove those items. That way, if you never, never want to compete against Amazon, you only want to compete against other third-party sellers, you can go ahead and do that as well. If you want to keep your average selling price a little bit higher, then maybe you want to make sure that you never sell anything below $10 or $20, you can place a price in there, and if the item on Amazon sells for less than your target price, it will remove any of those listings as well. Next, you'll see remove products in Amazon with certain keywords. Maybe you don't want anything that has the word bundle or case or pack. You can put those keywords in there and it will remove any of those. That way you're not worrying about a six pack of toothpaste or anything like that. If you want to remove something from the source title, this, this really has to do when uh, a website is searching by title rather than UPC. But let's say that a website adds clearance or sale to their listings and you want to remove clearance and sale so that you have a better opportunity to get good matches, you can put those keywords in there. If you want to add to the source title when searching on Amazon, say you want to look for um, eyeliner or makeup, you can add those in there if you're doing a search for eyeliner or makeup. If you want to get a return that's a certain per or certain multiple over what you're buying it for, let's say that you only want something that sells for three times what your purchase price will be, then you'll want to put that number right here in this box. Maybe you want to keep it your margins really wide and you go with something that is five times the store price. You can do that as well. It will limit the number of items that you get back in your search, but it will increase your margins. If you use a prep center or you have an employee that preps and packs products for you, you can break that down, excuse me, you can break that down on a per item basis. So for example, I know that there's a prep center here in Ohio that charges a dollar per item. You can place one dollar in there uh, and maybe it's a little bit more for an oversized item. You can place a dollar fifty in there, and it will add it to your purchase price. That way, you know whether or not you're still profitable while having to pay fees. Maybe your prep center has a extra price to create a bundle, and you're going to purchase a bunch of items, and you know that it's going to cost you two dollars to create a bundle. Uh, when you go look for those, you can add that in there so that you know that your price is still good. This will also add your cost per pound to ship to Amazon. This is really only going to work if Amazon has the weight and size data. But let's say, for example, that you normally ship to California and you're on the Midwest or the East Coast, you know it might be about 50 cents per pound. So you can go ahead and add that in there and it will make sure to update your cost of goods sold so that your ROI and everything is accurate. If you want to only keep data with a gross profit of at least X, say you don't want to sell anything that will give you a profit of less than $5 per item or $10 per item, you can place that in this box. That way anything that doesn't fit those margins will not even be shown. You'll never have to see it. This is one of my favorites. If you want to make sure your gross ROI is a certain percent, I'm happy to do 30%, especially on some faster selling items. But maybe you only want items that are 75 or 100%. It'll significantly reduce the amount of return that you get on your data, but you can place that in there so that you will only see items that you want to see. You can also show no match results and you can see only no match results. That way you can go in and maybe find a diamond in the rough that someone else hasn't. And then one of my other favorites is show Amazon out of stock results. This is going to show you items that Amazon is out of stock on and all third party sellers are out of stock on. So you could possibly be the only seller of that item and it could significantly increase your chances of selling that item. 
Now, a lot of times the rank will significantly go higher and higher as something is out of stock, so you may need to play around with this a little bit, make your ranks a little bit higher, because once things go back in stock, they do tend to sell a little bit better, especially if they're popular before. So you're going to want to make sure to use all these filters, well not all of them, but you're going to want to play around with these filters, see what's best for you and your business model, and then you'll want to go ahead and hit submit right down here when you're ready to scan a, uh, scan a category. Now I have already run this diaper category, and we'll go over here to our view data page, and we can see all of the results. Now we see that it's walmart.com because that's where I'm running it from. If you're doing a bulk list with multiple stores, it will tell you Walmart, Kmart, Sears, and all of those things. It gives you the title at the source store, the price, the Amazon title, the images so you can see if they match, what category it's in, the ASIN, the Amazon UPC, the regular UPC so you can see if there's a match there, the Amazon buy box price, the gross profit and the gross ROI, how many sellers there are, the weight, and the sales rank. You can hit this little X if you want it to go away, or the heart if you want to save it for later. You'll notice that some of these are purple. This means that someone has actually gone in and found this on their own because this was probably a mismatch, just like this one is here. You can see that this is a 40 pack, Oh, that's a 40 pack as well. Uh, they just look they, they look a little bit different. This one is a plastic wrap. This one looks to be oh, just a better picture. That's all it is. Uh, but you will run into things like these, and you can also do it by searching the uh, title, and it will go in, and you can try to find a mismatch on your own. So there's lots of ways to use this, and uh, I'll come back in just a second, and we will talk about doing bulk list uploads. Now, a few of the other things you can do on this page is if you select these boxes, you can delete the selected, you can save the selected, you can mark them as mismatches, and they'll go away. Uh, and you can also change the column visibility. So if you are not really worried about if it's eligible for Prime because you're only using FBA, you can take that away so you can see other, uh, other columns a little bit better. You may select all and deselect all. That'll make it easy if you're just getting rid of everything. Now the other thing you can do is up here you can update the source prices. So if you happen to be using uh, a fairly large cache so that you can make your scans quicker. Uh, this will update the source prices using real-time data, update the adjusted prices, update the Amazon data, and update all data. I usually only use this update all data, so if I go for a five-day cache just so that I can get things through faster, it'll pull down the items that uh, were profitable uh, in the past five days that have been scanned before and are saved in the cache, and it's a whole lot faster and then you can actually update all the data to make sure that it's still up to date and relevant. The other thing you can do is download the data so if you want to download all of this you just click download you'll be able to save it to a CSV file uh, if you happen to be a list seller or if you just want to be able to uh, move things around in an Excel spreadsheet a little bit better. Now the other thing that a lot of people don't know is that each of these columns are clickable. So if you want things in alphabetical order, you can click title. If you want things by gross ROI, you can click that. Uh, like Here's a great example, actually. This looks like a five pack. So you'll want to edit the quantity to five and hit save. And you can do that for every single one. And what that will do is that will update your buy price. It'll update the gross profit as well as the gross ROI. I'm running a little slow right now but I know there's some server issues going on that'll be fixed shortly and we don't need to worry about that. Uh, you'll notice some things that have zero sales ranks. I normally delete those out pretty quickly. Sometimes it could be because there are variations uh, but that's just the just the way it is. Uh, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, if I left anything out, Make sure to leave me a comment in the 
uh, on the blog, leave me a comment on the YouTube video. I'll be happy to come back in and clarify anything I can uh, and, uh, and hopefully walk you through it. But before we go, we're going to go back to the product search page and we're going to look at this use bulk. So if you click on use bulk, the first thing you're going to want to do is download this bulk example file. We'll save it to our desktop and we're going to open it up here. Now what we're going to see in here is we're going to see that we need three things. We need the category from whatever website we're using. Uh, for Home Depot and as well as Walmart, it'll actually be URLs. And then you're going to want your start page and your last page for each category. So if you wanted to put in 10 or 15 or 25 or 400 or 1,000 in here, you can do that. It'll run up to 16 hours. You just want to make sure to fill this out with no spaces in between. And then you can upload that. Upload the new file, choose the file, click on upload, these items will be blanked out because you no longer need to fill those in. You can click on use your last filter settings and then hit submit and then it will start going through all of those uh, in the bulk list. Oh, I'm sorry, you can only import 400 lines in your CSV. So 400 lines, up to 400 lines in your CSV, you can upload that and then hit submit and it'll do exactly what it did for uh, if you did things manually per category, uh, but it'll do it for a whole lot of them. Like I said, it'll run for 16 hours uh, and it'll find you things from one website and multiple categories, from multiple categories and multiple websites. There's just a ton of ways to do that. The wholesale list is also very similar. Uh, you'll just need wholesale price information, uh, title, things like that, and you can run a wholesale list as well. And once I get access to a wholesale list, I'll go ahead and make a video about that and add it as an update to the blog. So like I said a few minutes ago, if you have any questions, please make sure to leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions, uh, help you out any way I can, and make sure to check out our blog at cleartheshelf.com. I hope this helps. I appreciate you being here and spending some time with me, and uh, good luck sourcing, and have a great Q4.